Hi, this is Synth Chaser with SynthChaser.com. I'm making this video for Jeremy. I'm rebuilding uh, his OBXA voice cards and I'm going to calibrate them in my OBXA here. So uh, I'm going to show you, um, I don't have any presets in here so I, I have it now on manual. Uh, I'm going to show you um, under the hood of mine, it's an 8 voice. Um, I just turned it on, I didn't hit auto-tune and It's substantially in tune. Uh, so now I'm going to take Jeremy's voice cards and I'm going to pop them in my OBXA and we'll see what their initial status is. I've installed Jeremy's voice cards in my OBXA and I'm going to turn it on. And I'll put it in manual mode. So again, this is both uh, pulse oscillators on. And uh, let's see how they sound. They, they don't sound in tune. And as I was popping them in, I noticed some, uh, some str strange things on the voice cards. I'll take them out and um, we'll take a look at them and I'll tell you what I'm going to do to them. Taking a look at the voice cards, this is what a typical one looks like. Uh, it's got a combination of black trimmers that look like this one, uh, white and blue trimmers that look like this one, and some multi-turn trimmers that look like this. Uh, so this is a pretty typical voice card. And uh, this, is, uh, this is another one of the voice cards um, in Jeremy's OBXA. And this is an earlier revision voice card. So this is the uh, 1492B, and on the back is 1491B. And this is an older one, earlier revision. See, this is January 1981. And it's 1492, and on the back is 1491. Uh, there are some differences in the circuit board. I noticed this uh, this little mess over here around the 4.7 meg resistor. Uh, my kit includes a 4.7 meg uh, metal film resistor because uh, the one used there typically or can sometimes cause oscillator instability. Uh, so I would typically replace those during a voice card service. Uh, this I thought someone had hacked together, but I think that might have been done at the factory. You can see in that area the uh, the circuit board is different. See, there's this uh, there's a cut trace here. Uh, it looks like it was done at the factory, and over here it looks very different. So I'm going to leave that that mess alone and only replace the 4.7 meg resistor on this uh, later revision one. Um, these trimmers. Um, they're sprinkled throughout these boards and uh, they are not original. Um, in fact, he has one later revision board here that has that type of trimmer. That's not something that, um, that uh, was put there by the factory. Um, Jeremy said you thought you that these had been recapped, and, and I really don't think that they are. I mean, you can see that the older revision ones have these yellow capacitors. They're not, they're not modern by any standards, and then the, the newer revision ones uh, have these. So if someone went through and recapped them, they would have used the same caps for, for all the boards. Um, the, uh, you had also asked about this jumper wire and this is also something to do with it being an earlier revision board. So on the later revision voice boards there's a little capacitor here that's added on the back that's not present on the earlier revision. So the, these are okay. Um, so what we're going to do uh, for your voice cards is we're going to replace all the capacitors, uh, the electrolytic capacitors, um, here, 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 here. So seven capacitors each board. On your two uh, later revision voice cards, we're going to replace the metal film resistor here. On all the voice cards, we're going to replace the initial uh, tuning frequency uh, trimmer for, for oscillator one and oscillator two. And then we're going to go through and calibrate and see if there's any other issues as we, uh, as we attempt to calibrate everything. Uh, one other thing I noticed that there there had been some prior repairs to these boards, so uh, here is a capacitor that had been changed. A, a radial capacitor had been uh, changed with an axial capacitor had been kind of wedged in there. 
Uh, some of the chips in here I see have been replaced, like this uh, 4016 analog switch. That's like a that's like the 90s equivalent of NTE EGC made replacement chips. Um, like a lot of your Curtis chips, uh, they seem kind of mismatched. So like here's a uh, here's a ceramic one from 1979. Here's one, a plastic one from 1980. Here's a plastic one for 19, from 1982. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag there. And uh, I had noticed some other chips that had been replaced, like op amps and stuff. And then I noticed like some damage to the board, like here. Uh, it looks like uh, maybe someone had some trouble unscrewing it, and they damaged this trace when they took it out. Um, Here's another example. It looks like a, there's a little bite taken out of the board there. Um, I don't think that, that stuff should affect anything, um, but I just wanted to, to point it out. There's some... I mean, that's, that's not a trace that's connected to anything, but it's missing. But um, yeah, so these boards had been worked on in the past, and um, we'll uh, get everything just right and get it calibrated. I've depopulated the uh, components we're changing from the voice cards and some things that I noticed, uh, these yellow capacitors, I'm pretty sure that they're original. Um, who would have uh, recapped it and then replaced one of them with this uh, old looking axial capacitor? That, does, that doesn't make sense. And then on this other revision voice card they had these, um, these blue ones. They're Illinois Capacitor, which is the company that Oberheim used on most revisions. And one thing I noticed, if I can get this in focus, you can see this is a normal looking capacitor and on several of them the bottoms are bulging, like this one most pronounced. But I see, uh, I see this one, this one is also bulging. Um, I, I've taken out the, uh, the initial frequency trimmers and the two uh, pairs of uh, resistors on the uh, revised voice cards. Uh, pretty much, it looked like, uh, from work, working on it, I mean, some of these capacitors, they had been touched, but um, some of them hadn't been, so there had been no prior work done to these, so that's why I think they're original. Um, pretty much all the trimmers have been messed with at some point. I mean, you can look on the back of the board, and you can see, uh, you know, this is the one I took off, but even these other ones, which are original looking, you know, you can see the flux that was left behind down here too by uh, someone who who worked on this and then also uh, they put glue in all the uh, screwdriver slots for for all the trimmers um, except for the oscillator trimmers so the pulse width and the uh, the high track uh, don't have it but like uh, these other ones uh, down here all have the glue so hopefully that's not going to hinder us when we try to to make the adjustments for the calibration um, also, since someone had worked on this, uh, there's always a, you know, a possibility of bad soldering. And I, I did see one, one lifted trace here um, where they put this initial frequency trimmer in. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I mean, we can definitely get the new trimmer in there. It's not a problem. Um, but uh, that's what I observed while desoldering these components. And now I'm going to clean up the flux residues and uh, left by the, the previous uh, person who soldered those uh, trimmers in. And then we're going to put the new, new parts in and uh, start the calibration. So I rebuilt the voice cards and calibrated them. I had no issues. Uh, everything tuned well. Um, the filter for filters for for most of the voice cards were were pretty close, um, but now everything is in tune. You can see that it's cycling through the voice cards. And they sound pretty much indistinguishable. Uh, and they track across octaves, so I'll go da uh, down an octave. Down another octave.
So they're in tune and they're tracking well. Filters sound uh, consistent from voice to voice and uh, this is a success. I hope you enjoy it. I offer the voice card rebuild kit on my website synthchaser.com. I also offer the voice card rebuild service uh, where you can send your voice cards to me and I will rebuild them and calibrate them in my OBXA. If you're interested, visit me on the web at www.synthchaser.com. Thanks for watching.